Today we're going to talk a little bit about CIS operator and why to use the operator, when to use the operator, and also how to customize the configuration of the operator. And the customization is actually quite important um, since, it's since it's really important to point to the right image. Since there are multiple images of CIS and specifically for Red Hat, we, we should be using um, the Red Hat image. So I'm going to go through how to create that custom setting here within the operator and talk a little bit more about the operator. Um, first, what I want to do is I want to actually find and locate the operator within Operator Hub. So I'm using OCP 4.7, OpenShift's container platform 4.7, and if I simply just do a search for F5 networks under Operator Hub, I will find the operator. And so at this point, there's really just one prerequisite, and the one prerequisite is to configure the Big IP secrets. CIS needs to communicate, log into Big IP, configure Big IP with all of the objects within Kubernetes, and so therefore the Big IP, Big IP secrets are important. The operator does not configure the Big IP secrets within OpenShift, and so there is this prerequisite. You can do this in multiple ways. I'm not going to go into this in too much detail, but the Kubernetes secrets for the Big IP username and password um, have to be added. And so a way to do that is OCP create secret generic, I call it Big IP login, based on the namespace, uh, username and password. You can also do this with a file if you don't want to use command line. There are a couple of options to do this. In any case, we're going to go ahead and install the operator. So by installing the operator, there's a few options. One of the options here is to install the operator to monitor all namespaces or install the operator to maintain or manage a specific namespace within the cluster. This can be changed later on. Um, once the operator is installed, you can customize this when you create the instance of the operator. The approval strategy is I'm going to use automatic since I'm the one that's going to approve my operator and my operator doesn't require approval. But if your operator requires approval from maybe the OpenShift administrator, administrator or some administrator, you can go through the manual process. This takes a few minutes to actually go through the installation of the of the operator itself. Once the operator is installed, then we will go ahead and create the CIS instance. So I created this GitHub repo that kind of goes, that kind of goes through this process. So as you can see in my example, I created my big IP login, my prerequisites for my big IP secrets that CIS will use. Um, I In step one, I went ahead and looked for the operator and then did the install of the operator. And what you're going to see here within step three, I went ahead and installed the operator. And we're right now at step four, where we're waiting for the operator to completely finish. And then what we will see is a view the operator function uh, once we're able to view the function, then we can actually, at that point, then go and create the instance. So kind of this is where we are, step four right now. While this is installing, um, talk a little bit about this 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 operator. This is a Helm-based operator. So within CIS, actually I can show you at the top here. So it kind of talks a little bit about this operator. This is a basic install of the operator. And so since it's Helm based, it actually uses the Helm charts. What's nice about the operator is that it's available in the UI. It uses the operator framework. And so there's some level of integration. We also do a lot of validation and testing um, with the operator function by working with our partner Red Hat. So Red Hat does provide a lot of controls. Um, they do validate the images. So it's not just something that we can just upload overnight. It does take a little bit of time. They do check in. They make sure that we have uh, export control compliance. And, that, and and basically, they take a lot. They take care of a lot of the uh, fundamentals that you would expect from a partner community. And so that's quite that's quite nice. And that's one of the re, one of the major big benefits from using an operator instead of just deploying a manifest or a YAML file. Okay, let's continue. So we're at step four. And at this point, our operator has been installed. And so I can go ahead and take a look. And I can see from the installed operator's perspective, I can see that the container ingress services 
operator was successful as a couple minutes ago. This is just the specific API and I'm managing all namespaces. And so at this point, I can actually select the operator. And here's what's, what's really important. This is the creation of the instance itself. So now what I'm doing with this operator, I'm actually creating the CIS instance, the CIS deployment. This is actually the CIS pod that's going to be running in OpenShift that is going to be communicating with the big IP. And so to do this, I can go ahead and select create instance. You've got a couple of options here from the view perspective. However, the challenging item here is that there are some customization. And so for the operator to work with specifically with your customization, it's recommended and probably best practices just to use the YAML view at this point. And so that we can actually go and customize these values. So from the YAML perspective, there's a few things here. And these are some of the CIS arguments. And so a couple things here, if you wanted to create multiple instances of the operator, you could actually change the operator name. It's up to you. I didn't change my name in my instance because I'm only creating one CIS instance. Um, normally you can use uh, info, info, legal, info level debug. This is the virtual server IP address since we're using OpenShift routes. You can create the virtual server here. If you wanted to use a different resource method, you could put this in here if you wanted to. For example, if you wanted to manage something like CRDs, you could do that here. This is the big IP partition that we're going to be creating on the big IP. Since we're using, in this instance, um, SDN, if you're using VXLAN, you're going to specify um, where the what is the, the, the VXLAN profile name that is configured on big IP, the big IP IP address. Secure true, this is because I'm using a self-signed cert on my big IP, when we do schema validation between the big IP, it will fail because of the self-signed search. So if you if you have a trusted search, search, you can make this false. The item here is I'm using cluster IP. Um, this is the big IP credentials name. And this is what's really important. This right here is actually going to use F5 networks. And then this is the name of the repo. This repo right here exists in Docker. So this image is going to pull the latest CIS image from Docker. And maybe that's maybe not what what you want. Maybe you want to point uh, the image to um, to your personal repo. In my case, what I want to do is I want to point my image to the Red Hat catalog. Let's take a look at the Red Hat catalog. If we scroll down, I have a, a link here. So I want to point my registry to the registry connect catalog redhat.com. So for example, oh, sorry about this, accept the defaults. And so what what I would what I want to do is I actually want to point to this instance right here. So this is an instance of CIS that is actually running on the Red Hat catalog itself, which is actually which is actually better. If you actually look at this image, you can actually see F5 networks. This is actually the name of the image. This is a different image than the image that you would be pulling um, if you don't modify these values. You would be pulling this image, which is coming from Docker. And actually, I want to pull the image from the Red Hat catalog. And so we actually do have two different images. It's same fundamental code. In fact, the base image is basically the same. However, the, what's interesting here is that this is more of a trusted source. This is actually a trusted source, valid. And we, as a vendor, are a preferred vendor of the Red Hat catalog. And, and this is what makes the difference, is that since F5 and Red Hat are both partner community, we validated, we've done all the legal all the security checks to put our image up here. And so preferably, this is the registry that I would recommend that you use. So I'm going to go back to my previous settings here. And here is the recommendation that I would recommend 
you modify. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and copy this and I'm going to go ahead and paste it in here. And then what we'll do is we'll go through and we will take a look at some of these settings. Let's just modify this. And so what you can see I've done here, the repo I'm using is F5 Networks Controller Ingress Services at registry.connect.redhat.com. So it's coming directly from Red Hat, from the Red Hat registry and not from Docker. So it's really important. Highly recommend that. Here's my big IP secrets. I'm using cluster mode, my big IP IP address, my I'm using my I'm using flannel or VXLAN. So this is my tunnel information, my big IP partition. Uh, this is my virtual IP and I'm using debug. So at this point, what I can do is I can actually go and create this instance. And so when you create the instance, you can actually see that that was the name of the pod that I created. And so you can actually see that the install was successful. And there's a couple of couple of couple of other additional items. You could actually look at the YAML if you wanted to, or you can modify this this YAML, but you could actually see where the where the image was where the image was pulled from. The template, it kind of goes through the schema, etc. etc. So it kind of goes through the different the different pieces. One thing you can also do is you could go down to the deployment and you can actually see there is the deployment. This is the deployment that it was that it was created. It created this specific deployment from this operator. There is the name of the namespace. There is the name of the pod. And here, if you wanted to, you this is where you could actually e edit the labels or edit the deployment. You could actually edit the deployment right here. If I wanted to, I'm not going to make any changes there. But you could edit this deployment. What's what's really important here is that what I really wanted to show because it's just really the creation of the opera, but I wanted to show this. This is the registry. This is where what's what's really important, the connect.redhat.com. And you can kind of see here that this is where it's pulling the image from and not Docker. So going back to this repo, you could actually see that this is where we created it. It just kind of runs through the same thing. So that's the, that's the demo of how to install the F5 CIS operator with inside OpenShift. Really appreciate taking the time. Thank you.